Cerebral Cinema and the WON Radio Network present to you Superwoman. Yes, Superwoman, the dynamic crime fighter. Superwoman, the champion of justice. Superwoman, who in truth is mild-mannered Chicago news reporter Emily Nesbacher. I am the Bat Whistler. At will, my words and actions become hushed, and only the bats can hear me. Now listen carefully. Did you catch that? I just told you my darkest secret and you didn't hear a thing. In fact, I could be right beside you and you wouldn't know it unless I told you. Look around. See anything? A shadow, perhaps. Shadows are silent. So am I. Margot sits up. She looks around the room in paranoia. The words of her enemy echo in her mind. Whenever there is silence, she can hear these words clearly. Spoken to her long ago, she's never forgotten them. Lousy man, Bat. You're as bad as that cat lady keeping me awake every night. No wonder I'm crazy. Margot hops from her bed and runs to the wall, separating her room from the one punching Judy is in. Hey, quiet down in there. People are trying to sleep. Judy, Judy, Judy. Be quiet. People can't sleep with all that yelling you're doing. <laughs> I don't know who's worse. You or that whispering loud mouth. You mean the bat kisser? I heard him too. His words tickle my ears. <laughs> Stop laughing. Nothing is funny. We're both insane. This is intolerable. If I hadn't robbed a bank yesterday, I would take legal action against both of you for being public nuisances. You want peace and quiet? Then silence laughing boy here. Rorik faces Shady Lady, who is standing back, watching with amusement. I request permission to kill this man. Denied. <laughs> he makes me laugh. <laughs> a flower pot flies in from a window, smashing over Punching Judy's head. Punching Judy lays on the floor, unconscious. Shady Lady rushes to the window and looks out. Who threw that? From out of the night sky, a dwarfish man in a lime green tuxedo lowers into view. It is I, the incomparable Mr. Menjo. Menjo? I should have expected you. How dare you leave me behind? I had to hop through nearly 300 dimensions to find you. Where's Emily? Hades. That figures. You're always sending the good ones to hell. Then go straight there and leave me alone. Shady Lady shuts the window and locks it. The wall beside the window parts and in floats Mr. Menju, shaking his head mockingly. Silly halfwit. You know I never let windows or walls shut me out. <sighs> Why are you still here? Emily isn't. Emily can wait a moment. I plan on spending all eternity with her. He did silence the clown. Let him stay as long as he likes. Why trade one buffoon for another? At least this one ain't laughing. I am inside. At all of you. After all this comedy, I'd prefer some drama. Let me know which of these fools you want murdered. Both? Thanks. But I'm sorry to say, Menju is immortal. Hey, that'd make a great slogan if I ever ran for office again. It's awfully late, Menju. What on earth do you want? Some excitement. The last 79 dimensions I visited were mind-numbing. You'll find none here. We're all too tired to play. 
You're right. You all need a good night's rest. So I'll go get Emily and be back here in five minutes. That should give you plenty of time. Mr. Menju flies back out through the window, which is still closed. Lady Lady stomps her foot with annoyance. Idiot. Moron. Imbecile. I take it you do not like that strange little man? He's my obnoxious brother. Everywhere I go, he finds me. I also had pesky siblings. <laughs> They're all dead now. Superwoman flies around Hades, searching for a way out. She finds none and returns to the ground, where Jasmine and the Bat Whistler are waiting. Nope. No exit. No anything. Why am I not surprised? Because you know everything. And you at least know that, so you're good. As the ground rumbles, the giant shadow of a man appears on a cave wall in the distance. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of a superwoman. Our heroes take a defensive stance, bravely confronting this new threat. Be she dead, or have she life? I'll take her away <clears throat> and make her my wife. Mr. Menju drops into Superwoman's arm and gives her a peck on the lips. Teddy! Emily, I am so disappointed in you for being in hell. Our reputation as a couple is ruined. What are you doing here? Yeah, my sister, Little Miss She-Devil, sends all her closest relations here. Who is your sister? Aisha. A.K.A. She Who Must Be Obeyed. A.K.A. Shady Lady. A.K.A. Pearl Pitts. A.K.A. Okay, I get it. You never told me she's your sister. We're not the most loving. In the fifth dimension, people live forever. So we can get pretty sick of each other. You're from the fifth dimension? Yep. Just like my gal pal, Florence LaRue. Emily, who is this? My fiancé. Teddy Menju. Menju smiles and waves enthusiastically. Interesting. In the infernal region, we get stuck with our old flames. Right, Blake? I look to the future, not the past. So, ex-girlfriends be damned. Selena left, and so should I. Mr. Menjo, call your sister and tell her I've had enough of this place. I'll take you to her myself. You can get us out of here? Right you are. This deuce ex machina is at your service. Inside a dark and spacious drawing room that is lit with numerous candles, Shady Lady sits on a large throw made of the bank money she stole the day before. Rorik stands beside the throw. I expect Menju to... Before Shady Lady can finish her prediction, the wooden double doors to the drawing room have flown open. Menju enters, followed by Superwoman Jasmine and the Bat Whistler. Sissy Poo, your favorite person is here. I hate you. I brought friends over. I wish you'd die. Where's the grub? Go back to hell. And the booze? Shady Lady stands in fury. You are not welcome here. Menju stops and puts his hand on his hips, mockingly pretending to be offended. You know, I've got a good mind to leave. Shady Lady falls back on her throne in exasperation. The Bat Whistler steps forward. Where, Selina? My quarters. She is asleep and basking in comfort. You haven't smothered her again? Not yet. Maybe if she starts purring. Shady Lady, you and your gang are under arrest. <laughs> You'll find it difficult to imprison me. Emily. Teddy's as powerful as you are. And just as bad. We both love games, with humans as our pawns. Keeps us entertained. Now he has his pieces, and I have mine. Heroes versus villains. Wanna play, Menju? I would love to. Teddy. It'll be fun, Emily. You get to be on my team. I don't believe this. Hmm, if your team wins, we'll do something heroic. Like 
Save a village from a volcano. And if you win, we do the opposite? Rob another bank? You're unimaginative, but otherwise correct. The Bat Whistler is up first. His arch enemy awaits. With that, the Bat Whistler disappears. The Bat Whistler appears in a dark urban alleyway. He looks around, taking in his surroundings. He sees a figure crouching in shadows beside a dumpster. <laughs> the best duty in the world, all to myself. I am not one of your Judy victims. Yes, you are. Punching Judy stands and steps from the shadows. His extreme grin so clenched, the flesh around his eyes and mouth are beginning to crack and bleed. You're my favorite, Judy. <laughs> With rapid speed, Punching Judy slugs the Bat Whistler in the jaw. <laughs> The Bat Whistler is down. Punching Judy steps over him, hitting his fist into his palm. <laughs> Man, that felt good. The Bat Whistler clutches his fist and strikes Punching Judy in the knees. Punching Judy flies back and hits the ground, flopping about like a rubber hose. The Bat Whistler is on his feet. He stands over his enemy, looking down without pity. <laughs> Silly, Judy. You can't hurt me. My body is made of cloth and plastic. <laughs> it's flesh and bone, you creep. Punching Judy springs forward and wraps his arms around the Bat Whistler's leg. I will bend, but I won't break. I have the spine of a bouncy snake. <laughs> the Bat Whistler grabs the back of Punching Judy's jester outfit lifts him up and hurdles him at the brick wall. <laughs> Punching Judy bounces off the wall, hits the ground, and flops about like a firecracker. <laughs> the Bat Whistler picks Punching Judy up and stuffs him into a garbage can. Placing a lid on the can, the Bat Whistler rattles it mercilessly. The Bat Whistler halts his assault. Inside, the can is silent. The Bat Whistler picks up the can and holds it up over his head. I got him. I win. The Bat Whistler disappears, and the garbage can falls to the ground. The lid pops off, revealing the can's inside to be empty. The Bat Whistler reappears in Shady Lady's drawing room. Congratulations. You're up next, Miss St. Just. Jasmine vanishes from the room. Jasmine appears in a spacious backyard patio behind a stately manor. She stands beside a pool. In front of her are Margot Strong and Madame Greenthumb. I have to fight both of you? That's unfair. Not me, Jasmine. I'm not your enemy. You're a law-abiding cream puff, so I'm gonna kill ya! Hurrah! Margot attacks Jasmine, sending them both into the pool. Jasmine and Margot struggle under the water. Margot has gone crazy, smacking and kicking Jasmine. Green Thumb watches the brawl, trembling with fear. Stop it! She's delicate like a flower! Jasmine goes limp and begins to drown. In a panic, Green Thumb dives in to save her. After separating Margot from Jasmine, Green Thumb swims Jasmine to the side of the pool and pushes her up out of the water. Green Thumb and Margot get out of the pool and stand over Jasmine's paralyzed body. Why'd you save her? You ain't no hero. I'm not a hero or a villain. I don't like people. Except you two. Green Thumb lifts the sleeve of Jasmine's shirt, revealing her arm is wrapped in vines. When punching Judy crippled Jasmine, I wrapped her entire body in my special vines, restoring her ability to walk. You know better than she is when it comes to niceness. She was nice to me first. And with me, that was a first. Fine. Since she is a friend of my friend, I won't harm her anymore. But I still win! 
The back door to the manor has opened, and Shady Lady exits through it, followed by Superwoman, Mr. Menju Rurik, and the Bat Whistler. Nicely done, Margo. It's shamefully clear who lost this battle. Superwoman and the Bat Whistler rush to Jasmine and crouch down to her. Superwoman lifts Jasmine's head into her lap. She's alive! And broken. I can mend her. Stay away from her! You're all evil! That ain't true. I'm certifiably rotten, but Green Thumb has sweetness inside her. She's probably even closer to Jasmine than either of you are. Your turn, Emily. Superwoman glares at Shady Lady before disappearing. Superwoman finds herself standing in a thick forest. The full moon is the only light source. Superwoman looks at the ground and sees an endless barrage of spiders crawling over the land. Spider Agent lowers from a web in front of Superwoman. Before we begin, I must inform you of something. I never fight with anyone. I prefer to assassinate opponents weaker than me. So allow me to level up. The spiders crawl up Spider Agent, surrounding her. They form into the shape of one giant spider. Superwoman is diminished by the massively amassed monstrosity. The spider stomps its eight legs at Superwoman. Superwoman dodges and flies up to safety. She stares down at the spider as her eyes begin glowing bright red. The spider shoots a squirt of webbing at Superwoman's face. It splats over her eyes, not only blinding the heroine, but rendering her laser vision utterly useless. With its expansive legs, the spider climbs up to the treetops. It reaches for Superwoman and grabs her by the feet. She is pulled toward the spider's mouth and eaten alive. Inside the spider, Superwoman picks off the webbing from her eyes. Once her eyes are free, they begin glowing red again. Spider Agent's face emerges from the assembled spidery innards. You're gonna kill millions of innocent spiders just to beat me. Who is the villain here? Superwoman closes her eyes and reopens them. They are no longer glowing red. If I lose, Shady Lady will turn me into a criminal. The world needs more criminals. Law and order is just a means to control people. You control these spiders. Spiders aren't people. You're right. So sadly, they must die for the greater good. Lasers shoot from Superwoman's eyes and strike the spiders. <laughs> An explosion from inside the monster goes off and it crumbles apart. Superwoman and Spider Agent fall to the ground. Superwoman stands and walks to Spider Agent. I can't move. My back is broken. A and my spiders. My poor dear spiders. Superwoman, you are evil. Maybe. We all fight for our own causes. For better or worse. I've won this battle. Superwoman puts her head down with a heavy heart before disappearing. Shady Lady, Mr. Menju, Rurik, and the Bat Whistler see Superwoman appear before them. We did it, Emily. We're ahead again. Now what? You're gonna face off against your sister? Oh yeah. This'll be good. Mr. Menju goes to Shady Lady and leans his elbow on her knee. Go ahead, honey. Take a piece off me. There's plenty to spare. Shady Lady looks down at Minju and rolls her eyes. I despise you and am truly disgraced by our kinship. However, I openly admit you are far more powerful than I. Therefore, I choose to forfeit. What? Huzzah! The incomparable Mr. Minjoa's champion. Now get off my new money throne. Don't push me, Menju. One day I will have power over you. For the first time in ages, Menju's cheery attitude flickers and a glimmer of dread replaces it. He quickly shakes it off and faces Superwoman. I couldn't have done it without you, Emily. My woman is undeniably super. Whether I'm heroic is debatable. I haven't saved anyone lately. Not even Selena. 
Save her from what? She is married to a prince. Rurik smugly leaves the room. If he's a prince, I'm a pacifist. Speaking of which, who do I fight next to get out of here? No one. We're all... Uh, heroes now. Your victory settled it. Good night. Shady Lady stands and leaves the room. I don't trust her. Then follow her, my good man. Investigate. Find out what she's up to. Just leave. So Emily and I can do a little victory necking. Wink, wink. <laughs> Without another word, the Bat Whistler sneaks to an open window. Silently, he leaps out into the night. Say, he's got the right idea. Let's get out of this dismal place. Come back when the sun is shining. The mighty superwoman and her companion, the incomparable Mr. Menju, soar high above the world hand in hand. What adventures await these two all-powerful beings? The possibilities on the horizon are endless, so be sure to look up and listen with both ears. The sky is always open. Heroism awaits! Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.